Hi Pisces, how are you? Here's your September 2017 reading. I briefly, briefly, briefly went over the astrology for you all. I like barely went over it. Um, and I think mainly because y'all are going to have that full moon in Pisces happening on September 6th. And um, it's going to be happening in your first house. So I feel like that's, 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 a, that's, that's big. That's big enough. <laughs> um, you know, when we have full moons in the first house, um, it usually indicates a beginning or not a beginning, a closing out and end, a culmination of some aspect of yourself. Um, and the card flipped around. What are you worrying about? So this is a general energy, right? So there's a lot that's um, shifting and changing for you. Well, there's a lot of, you know, and also we're in Virgo season, which is your opposing, your opposing sign. Um, so, you know, not feeling too comfortable with this sun in Virgo, right? Just because you know, Virgo is, Virgo is okay with being here. Virgo is adapt, you know, is, 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 has adapted to being here, to being, to this nervousness, this nervous energy, and is able to kind of turn this energy and spin it into gold and utilize it for, um, utilize it as motivation, right? To, to, to move forward and to organize, to be meticulous, to, to plan and to kind of, be in action to kind of dissipate and leave this energy. Whereas Pisces, you know, being here, um, like what's the, you know, like not knowing the first place, the first thing to do to really relieve yourself of this Nine of Swords energy, right? Um, and being very much in the feels of how this feels. Um, so let's get some more information. So Nine of Swords, King of Pentacles. <clears throat> earth sign that y'all are y'all are thinking about um five of pentacles king of wands don't mind my roommate walking around he's harmless um let's see what else <laughs> is coming up king of cups so there's a lot of people there's a lot of um I'm seeing a lot of people. And Scorpio also had a lot of people around them in their reading. And it it's just feeling like a lot of these people... Okay, well, the King of Cups has got some good energies. Let me show you what's going on. So we have this Nine of Swords, this King of Pentacles, this Five of Pentacles, and this King of Wands, this King of Cups, and this Four of Wands. So... We have a lot of people. There's a lot of there's a lot of players right now. Um, the King of Cups, <coughs> um, you know, really is probably your best bet right now. And it's because, you know, the King of Cups is a water energy. It's a water sign. It's very much in touch with the emotions. The King of Pentacles, right, Earth energy can be good for us too. But sometimes when we have Earth energy, there can tend, there, there, there can tend to be this also this disconnect from feeling and emotion, right? Um, you know, Earth signs aren't notoriously being known for being incredibly affectionate, right? Um, they're known for being able to get things done and handle responsibility, and that's how they show love. Um, but they're not going to show love like a Cancer, a Scorpio, or a Pisces, right? Um, they're not, and, and, I, and I feel that, you know, this King of Cups definitely feels like a better match, right? If these people represent different options that you're sort of weighing right now in your love life, this King of Cups is going to be your best bet. Also because this King of Cups landed next to this Four of Wands, right? Which is, which shows stability and shows the four, four is for me representing security, and representing where we draw our security from and that being able to be with in partnership or in whatever situation you're with with this energy can be very securing for a water sign right and me myself I'm a I am an Aquarius Pisces cusper I'm an Aquarius sun but my moon is in cancer and even for me being in a being a, a total you know you know 
you know, a purebred air sign, right? I have a lot of air in my chart. That Cancer Moon is the kicker. And I really need partnerships, friendships, even my work relationships. There needs to be some level of emotional connection and bonding to where I can feel secure, right? That Cancer Moon. That cancer fucking Moon. Anyway, let's keep going and see what else comes up for Pisces. For September 2017. Okay, Pisces. Page of Pentacles. We have the Devil. We have the Ace of Cups. All right. And on the bottom, we have the Moon. Oh, yes. We have that full moon in Pisces, right? Full moon happening in Pisces, September 6th, in your first house. Um,. So, you know, and then on September 19th, we're going to be having the new moon in Virgo in your relation in your relationship sector in that seventh house. And we're also going to be having, I believe, on the 16th, Mars and Mercury meeting up together in your seventh house um, in Virgo. If I am wrong, please correct me in the comments below and I deeply apologize. Um, so yeah, a lot of, a lot of, so there is, right? So there is, of course, yes, the need to talk about relationships, <laughs> the need to talk about, you know, how you are harmonizing with other people and the choices, right, that we're making when it comes to being in relationships. And um, so like I said before, starting out, we had this Nine of Swords, worrying um anxiety there is something that that is that is has taken over your mind there is something that his that you are ruminating over and losing sleep over right and i believe that it has a lot to do with this king of pentacles it has a lot to do with this earth energy card this person here this taurus this virgo or this capricorn or somebody with a lot of with a lot of earthy energy um somebody who you know, appears, can appear to be very stable. Um, and that can be very, very attractive to water signs or people who are very much in touch with their emotional selves and who, you know, are very, and who would describe themselves as very sensitive or emotional, right? Stable energies are very attractive to us. But the flip side of that is that these same stable energies, they're stable because they don't really allow themselves to step into the emotional plane. They don't allow themselves to allow feelings and emotions to play a part in how they live out their daily lives. Whereas for us, for people that are sensitive, right, that pick up on things that, you know, you know, that are that are here, right, over even the simplest of thoughts, right? We, we need somebody who, yes, is going to be stable, but is also going to be very loving and who's also going to um, express, be, be expressive in how they feel towards it. So I want to get more information on this King of Pentacles. Can I have, okay. Um, so yeah, if, you know, this person is a fighter, right? This person has worked very hard to get where, to get where they're at. Um, and I think that's what's most important to them right now. That's what's most important to them. And, you know, they sort of, they play by the rules. They've worked hard, but they played by the rules. And they're not really willing to sort of step off of their throne or their pedestal, right? They're not, that's not, that's not going to happen. Um, so whoever this earth sign is, this earthy person is, you know, they're very stable and they've created stability, but they've done that for themselves. They're not doing it. They're not really, they're not trying to be out there and to create something with another person. Um, they're really about sticking to their own agenda, sticking to their own plan, sticking to their own power, um, and not being knocked off of that, right? And I think for you, that's painful because you kind of feel left out, right? You feel like this person doesn't really pay you, like here you are. 
right? Following around this person and they're not really paying you any mind. They're just kind of continuing to go on and off by themselves. Um, so, you know, this King of Pentacles, a stable person, yes, has worked very hard for what they have, but is not really interested in sharing that right now with you or any other person for that matter. And is really just about kind of being on their own throne, being on their own pedestal, um, and, you know, and also for me, this can also represent fighting off, right, fighting off normative, fighting, fighting, you know, relationships and, and marriage and all of that may not be on their radar, right, and, 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 and coming together with somebody partnership in a normative way may not be on their radar. And so they're just kind of like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm fighting that off. I'm standing on my own, on my own. And I'm holding, I'm holding it down for myself right now and not really interested in sort of engaging in traditional partnership, marriage. Right. And that's, that's not been a comfortable place for you here. So we have this King of Wands here, right? And I feel like this King of Wands is another person, um, can I get clarification on this King of Wands, please? Who is this King of Wands? Who is this King of Wands? So, this King of Wands was clarified by the Ten of Wands. I want some more information on the King of Wands. Um, this possibly could be somebody who you've been in some sort of competition with regarding this King of Pentacles. But nonetheless, whoever this King of Wands also is, I mean, they're also connected to this Five of Pentacles energy. And so this person really isn't, you know, quite possibly, you know, in the wake of this person not working out, right? Then this King of Wands, it's too unstable. It's not, it's too authoritative and it's overbearing. It's an overbearing burdensome. It's overbearing. It's not, you know, they're interested in having power over you um, and exerting, right? Because this King of Wands for me, um, he's got his fists clenched, right? And he has this face of like, I'm about to tear shit apart. Um, and so it's a very aggressive card, but it's also kind of a card that speaks to me of like, you know, exerting and, and, and exercising power just to prove that you have power, you know, not really because you're trying to do something good with it or positive with it or enforce change with it in a positive direction. You're just trying to kind of enforce power just to kind of enforce power. Um, it can also represent a father, father issues, right? Like what are the father issues, what are the relationship issues attached to male authority figures that you continue, like, that you, like, are finding people that are emotionally unavailable, right? That are fighting off, wanting to be emotionally connected to you. Can I have more info on this King of Wands, please? More information on the King of Wands, please. Hmm, this King of Wands is kind of baffling me a little bit. The Hermit. Yeah, this King of Wands also just kind of wants to be alone as well. Um, but what I feel like this Hermit really also means is that, you know, the Hermit pops up when we need to learn a fundamental lesson or when we need to have deeper insight into what it is that we're doing, right? The hermit appears when it's time for us to take that inward journey, similar to the eight of cups, right? 
taking that inward journey to figure out where's my inner light? You know, why do I keep engaging in whatever behavior I'm engaging in? Like, like trying to understand things on a deeper level, um, not just, you know, in a physical sense, like understanding things as they are, but also being able to apply meaning and symbolism to what it is that we're doing, right? And so how I feel like this King of Wands is here to kind of teach you or show you a lesson in And you know what? And this hermit card also represents Virgo. And right now we've got Virgo in your seventh house, right? So, well, Virgo's always in your seventh house. But, you know, what are, like, what is it that you need to learn regarding relationships? Like, what is it that you need to learn regarding this, these people here, right? And this King of Wands being incredibly overbearing, um, how are you asserting yourself in your relationships? Are you just kind of going along for the ride, right? Or are you like, are you passively, are you passively existing in your relationships? And this King of Cups here, like I was saying before, this King of Cups definitely feels right, like a better match because we have these these two beautiful cards next to this King of Cups. This King of Cups has the capacity to really offer the security and the stability that you're that you're that you're needing, right? That you're asking for. And this King of Cups also has the capacity to see your worth and your value, right? The Page of Pentacles for me represents um, the beginning stages of recognizing self worth, right? That that when you first that first glimpse of, of, of seeing the beauty of who you are. And this King of Cups has a capacity to totally do that. This King of Cups knows, knows your value and knows your worth, right? But I'm still a little bit sort of confused, not confused, but like, where does this, tell me, can I, can, where did this King of, King of Wands come from? Because I'm feeling it's very disjointed. Where did this King of Wands come from? That made me do a whole other friggin' spread for this one card. Um, King of Wands. Who is this King of Wands? Okay, so we got a few cards that came out. Okay, well this is making a little bit more sense now. So I do feel like this King of Wands is another person, right? So you have the Four of Cups, the Three of Wands, and the Page of Wands. So, you know, as I mentioned before, we have this King of Pentacles here, right? And... I don't feel that, I feel that this, this, the situation, there were high hopes for it working out. It was not going to work out because for whatever reason, this, this, this King of Pentacles, though stable and sturdy, does not have, does not possess the emotional intelligence or the emotional capabilities that you as a Pisces really need in a relationship, right? Um... And there also needs to be some sense of imagination, right? Like it's Pisces being ruled by Neptune, you know, imagination, mysticism, playfulness. Like there's a very sort of ethereal energy that 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 is attached to Pisces and Neptune. And, you know, the Hierophant doesn't really have a place in that energy field. The Hierophant is all about the traditions that, you know, the traditions that normative society has created, um, the traditions that, um, you know, we abide by, that we don't question just because they've been placed in front of us since we were children, right? And Pisces is really about believing, believing, you know, having belief beyond this, right? Pisces have belief and faith 
in structures and in systems beyond the systems that exist in this world, right? Pisces are straddling constantly this real world and the spirit world, right? So they really have very little interest in like, you know, the mundane realities of this world. Whereas this person, this king of pentacles, especially if they're a Capricorn, right, will definitely, Capricorn or a Virgo, will definitely have not only interest but investment in the sustainability and the and the um the longevity right of these normative processes right of the of these normative systems that Pisces Pisces Aquarians Hedatarians don't really care much for um and other water signs either Scorpios don't we don't care they don't care they don't really care much for this right it, it's it's useful when it's useful, but when it's not, it just needs to go away. So this King of Pentacles is not really compatible, but I definitely, you know, and, and I feel like you all know that. You all know, know that this person's not compatible for you, but for whatever reason, you're not willing to really let that go. You're not willing... Like, I feel like the universe is trying to offer you new opportunities, but you're not willing to let this person go. Um, and as a result of that, you're actually only creating your own, you're, 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 you're perpetuating your own sense of feeling left out in the cold, right? Um, and if this person's not being honest with you, which I feel like they're being honest with you, maybe not in a very direct way, but they're definitely trying to find ways to make it clear to you, look, I'm not, I'm not trying, I'm not trying to really make this an actual concrete status thing. I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying, I'm trying to, I'm actually trying to, I got, I got, I got things I'm trying to do and battles that I'm trying to win. And I'm trying to fight off any attempt at being held down, you know, into a relationship. Right. Um, meanwhile, they also kind of lack this sort of imagination that I feel like a Pisces really needs to also, be with somebody who may not necessarily have that same level of imagination, but can respect it, can respect it and can appreciate it and can see the, the value in it, right? Can really see the value in it. And that's what I mean is that even though earth and water tend to be seen as compatible when it comes to sun signs, um, earth, earth signs may have a hard time understanding the imaginative qualities and capabilities of water signs. So, you know, sometimes when it comes to water, water and water is sometimes best because you both understand each other um, in a way that other signs, other elements don't get because there's an imaginative ethereal quality to you that's hard to grasp unless you're also living in that same, you know, kind of quality. Um, the stability is nice. Right. But, you know, you can have all the pentacles you want, but it doesn't matter if you're feeling left out in the cold emotionally, you're going to feel like this, even if you have all of this. Right. It's a matter of perception. And that in this situation, the perception is that, yes, there are pentacles present. There's beauty present, but there's coldness as well. It's very cold. It's a cold relationship. Um, but for some reason, y'all aren't willing to really let it go. Um there are new opportunities that are being offered to you. Um, there are new, there are new people that are trying to come in. Um, and you know what? Now this is actually kind of making a lot more sense to me because what I see with this King of Wands and this, and this Ten of Wands is that this person is kind of doing the most to try and get your attention, right? Um, I feel like this person has kind of gone above and beyond. And the reason why they're coming out as this kind of frustrated king is because, you know, they're feeling like you don't see them. They're feeling like you're not, you're not acknowledging them. You're not, you don't see them now, you know? Um, but yeah, unwilling to let go. And, and, you know, I think eventually, you know, there, there is a point, right? There will come a point where, you're like, okay, whatever. I'll see what I'll see. I'll see what else the universe has to offer me. Like, okay, I'm going to put it out there. I'm going to put the message out to the universe. That this is what I want. Um, maybe even waiting for this person to come back around. 
this King of Pentacles to come back around because this is a card of waiting. Um, and in that waiting process comes new. Like you, you receive a message, right? Because this person is also waiting for a message. This this Three of Wands is also waiting for messages to come in and to be received. And instead of receiving a message about this King of Pentacles, it's a whole new. It's you're receiving you're receiving information about a new person. This Page of Wands is telling you about this King of Wands, right? And you know, this King of Wands, I feel like is trying the most, trying the most, but it's not really, I don't think you're really too in, I don't think you're really too into it. I think that you definitely understand that there are lessons. I think, I think that by the time this King of Wands came around, you were open and willing to learn the lessons that the hermit, that, that this hermit card, right? I think then by the time this person came around, you were like, you're now like, oh, you know what? Well, I'm, I just kind of want to be alone. And I just kind of want to reflect, right, on, on how I navigate my relationships. And this is pertinent because Virgo is going to be in your seventh house. And we're also going to have Mars and Mercury in your seventh house, right? So really reflecting on how you go about doing the things you do in your relationship sector. Um, especially when it comes to communication. Um... And especially when it comes to asserting yourselves in relationships, you know, verbally and vocally. Um, and with Virgo there, Virgo wants to look at the function of things. And if certain behaviors do not really serve a function or a purpose, then they're not needed, right? Um, and even so forth that Virgo looks, well, is a relationship even needed right now? Is a relationship serving its purpose for me right now? No, then a relationship is not needed either. You know, so there is, so I feel like by the time this King of Wands came around or is coming around, right, this probably hasn't even happened yet for a lot of you, but by the time this King of Wands comes around, there is this sentiment of like, well, I kind of actually just, you know, I'm actually cool being on my own at this point, right? Can I get clarification on the hermit? Clarification on the hermit. Why is the hermit here? Why is the hermit here? Yeah, I, I definitely sense that a lot of you are like, you know, that emperor energy of, um, I feel like you definitely, as the emperor, I feel like you definitely hold some kind of power over this king of wands, right? Because the emperor is the emperor of all, of all, the king of all kings. Um, but I see a lot of you definitely stepping into your own authority, stepping into your own power, um, stepping into your own, um, leadership capabilities, right, when it comes to your relationships, instead of take, taking kind of a backseat role, right, like these two energies are very different, right, like we go from being here to kind of being very codependent and going along with whatever this energy kind of wants to do, to being here and saying like, you know what, no, fuck that, I'm done, um, and this King of Wands may be good for the time being, right? Because this is, this is a very temporary, this is your energy for the time being, right? This is not who Pisces is all the time, unless you've got a shit ton of Aries in your chart, right? Which is totally possible, right? You could totally be a Pisces and have lots of Aries in your chart because, you know, they're so close to one another. So that's very possible, right? But, you know, this King of Wands, it's compatible energy, but for the, not, not for the long haul, right? Um, and I do see this King of Wands becoming kind of frustrated with dealing with you and not knowing like, oh, are they still in love with this person? Like what's going on? Do they even like, they just want to be alone? Do they even like me? Like they're, you know, what's going on? Do they, do they just want to be by themselves? Like, I'm not sure. Right. Um, can you tell me about this King of Cups? Can I get clarification for this King of Cups, please? Yeah, this King of Cups, and then this King of Cups comes along, and it's kind of like a, should I or should I not? Like, you're it's very cautious, feeling extremely cautious. Um, 
feeling extremely sort of on edge about moving forward with this person and also not really knowing if you can like what's what's gonna what's to come if I fuck with this person and if I fuck with this king of cups right um can I get more clarification on this king of cups I just really want to know The tower. Let's see. Yeah, the tower representing, you know, the foundations that aren't built, right? Like really being fearful <laughs> that it's going to be another situation, another tower. But the thing is, is that we tend to catastrophize the previous heartbreak, right? The previous heartbreak is always made out to be a lot worse than what it actually was. And so what was what and so what was actually this in memory may feel like this when it was really just this, right? Um, we were really just dating a person who was not that interested and wasn't may or may not have been too upfront about it. But it didn't work out nonetheless. And, you know, there may have been some other people here that tried to get our attention in the meantime, but it didn't really didn't really go out that way. Now here comes this King of Cups, right, who is very compatible with my energy, who is in touch with their emotions, who can speak to can speak my language, right? Very, very imaginative in the same way that I am or very can understand and at least respect my imaginative abilities, right? And, but then there's a sort of fear and it's like, well, if I do that, what will happen? And if I do that, will it create this tower again? And if I do that, will this happen? And, um, but I don't see that. I, I see, I see stability. I see security. I see you engaging with somebody who actually knows your worth. I see you engaging because I feel like this king of wands, yes, has, is, but again, is really kind of only putting up the good fight because you're not really, your focus is somewhere else, right? So this fire energy is putting up the good fight, not because they see this, but because it's, like you're playing hard to get, so to speak. Um, and then we have the, the devil and the ace of cups that came out together. Um, so definitely this relationship that you have with this king of cups, there's a sort of, you know, destiny, destined kind of feeling. There's a feeling of like, yes, I'm like this per, I was supposed to meet this person, this person, you know, I have valuable, you know, lessons to learn from this person. I have, you know, a lot to gain from this relationship, right? Because um, the devil to me, yes, can represent addictions, can represent um, behaviors that we're engaging in, that we're in bondage to, that aren't for our highest good. Karmic relationships, platonic, rela um, Pluto, Pluto. Plutoic relationships, not platonic, Plutoic relationships, um, you know, abusive relationships. But I want to get clarification on my deck on this devil card because next what we have this ace of cups. And I feel like this ace of cups definitely speaks of really, again, with this water sign, this watery, this, 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 this energy that's more emotionally mature and more emotionally capable of going through the emotions and the motions with you. I see that, right? So can we clarify this devil card? Why is the devil here? The devil card also speaks to me of destiny. Um, you know, things that we can't really run from. Can we get clarification for the devil card, please? Okay, that's good. Um, so we have the High Priestess here and the King of Swords for the Devil. Hmm. I see this as a relationship or a, a connection, right? This high priestess, it's a very psychic 
and intuitive connection. It's a very mental connection. It's a connection where whatever is sort of being downloaded psychically or intuitively, um, I feel like something within this relationship, something within this the, the bond between you and this King of Cups, it's a spiritual connection, right? And as a result of that, whatever is received and downloaded by this high priestess then finds an outlet to be communicated through this king of swords, right? Like this king, like I feel like these two are partners in a sense because one receives the downloads and the other one is able to communicate. So I definitely see a partnership where healing work um, is able to take place, right? And this ace of cups also represents healing represents healing waters, healing energy. So whatever this relationship is, um, it's very pertinent to your development. To It's very pertinent to whatever, you know, if you're a healer, if you identify as an intuitive who wants to use their intuition to help other people, so to bring healing into the world, this relationship is going to be able to give you some kind of tool, some kind of outlet through which you can actually express that verbally, right, or mentally, right? It, it, it's going to allow, there's definitely a connection or relationship between the downloading of the intuition, the psychic information, and then the ability to kind of put that forth, right? Um, and to be project oneself out into the world. It's a king. It's a, it's a masculine card, right? So it's about projection into the into the world. Um, but I definitely see some really beautiful healing energies being able to occur in this bond with this King of Cups, and it's going to feel very much. Sorry for the sirens outside. It's going to feel very much like you were destined to meet this person. Um, and yes, there is some type of purpose, I feel. So let's get an outcome card for Pisces. Outcome for Pisces for September 2017. Outcome for Pisces. September 2017. Four of Swords. So yeah, once again, and I feel like this really speaks to this high priestess energy here. Um, but this is going to be a very, very intuitive month for you all. This is going to be a very, and that makes a lot of sense because you're having that full moon in Pisces. And you all are already, you know, open as it is. So I, I see this as definitely being a month where it's, a, it's important for you all to really be reflective and meditative over whatever messages you're receiving, either psychically or emotionally or intuitively, whatever you want to call it, this is definitely a month where your intuition is really on point um, and where you're very much in touch with your inner self and, you're, and, and knowing, like just your inner knowing, right? And that's why I feel like right, even with this King of Wands, who even though they're giving you all this attention, you're still kind of like, no, there's, I'm not getting a, the best feeling about this. Um, and, 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 and I, I'm content with being alone for right now. Like I'm not willing to compromise. Right. And, and I see, and I feel that in that, in that discipline, right. In that self-discipline, in that knowing of self, then comes this really beautiful situation with this person who I think you're actually meant to do some really awesome things with, right. Regarding healing work, um, and communicating, right. About healing work. But I see this as a, being a very intuitive month for you all. Um, so that's your reading for this month, Pisces. And if you'd like a personal reading with me, you can email me at tattoosandtarot at gmail.com. Or you can go to my website, which is tattoosandtarot.com. But that's currently being redone. So it might just be easier for you to go to tattoosandtarot at gmail.com. Um, and also, if you purchased a reading with me recently, please, and you haven't sent me an email at tattoosandtarot at gmail.com, please send me an email. Um, the way that PayPal works is I cannot, I cannot contact buyers. They give me none of your contact information whatsoever. So if you purchase a reading and you don't email me, then I have no way of communicating with you to set up a time or a date, which is part of the reasons why I'm having everything redone on my website so it can be easier for people in the future. So, um, I hope you liked your reading and I love you all Pisces and I will see you all in October. All right. Bye.